بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome all viewers Today we will be beginning, inshallah, the first episode in a new series entitled 40 Hadith for the New Muslim and what we will be doing is we will be going over 40 statements of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and I have carefully selected these 40 statements with the new Muslim in mind this is basically based on my own personal experience having embraced Islam myself as a young adult almost 15 years ago and it's also based on my experience studying the religion in the city of the Prophet and then also it is based on my interactions with new Muslims. Now that I'm back in America giving da'wah, serving as an imam to a community, there are people who come, they take their shahada, they embrace Islam, and then there are lots of questions, and we see some of the things that they go through. So with all of that in mind, I'm hoping that, inshallah, it will be a valuable resource to anyone who embraces Islam. And not only that, but anyone who's interested in Islam, even if somebody is a non-Muslim, uh, they will benefit, inshallah, from this series. And hopefully, Allah will guide them to accept uh, his religion by watching these videos, by studying these narrations, these teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is also, inshallah, going to be beneficial to someone who has been a practicing Muslim their entire life. So without further ado, I want to get right into the very first hadith. Hadith number one, the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّكَ لَن تَدَعَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِلَّا بَدَّلَكَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مَا هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Certainly, you will not leave something for the sake of Allah, the mighty and majestic, except that Allah will replace it with something better. Now, I specifically chose this hadith to be the first in this series because it really touches my heart. It really resonates deeply with me as somebody who embraced Islam. Because when you embrace Islam, you might be in a situation where there are so many things that you find yourself having to leave for the sake of Allah, for the sake of practicing Islam. And making decisions, deciding to leave sins and to do things that are pleasing to our Lord. This is a distinguishing feature of the human being. Allah created us as human beings with the capability to make choices. And one major thing that typically influences the choices we make is whether or not we feel it's going to be beneficial for us in one way or another. And if we can keep this hadith in mind, then this can change our entire outlook on life, our entire understanding of the results of our choices. If we can truly internalize what's being taught to us in this hadith, then this is glad tidings that anything that you might think you're going to be missing out on, anything that you feel that you are going to be at a loss for leaving for Allah's sake, is in fact not going to be a loss for you. On the contrary, Allah has promised that He will replace it with something better. But also keep in mind that this life is a test. Allah tells us in the Quran, do the people think that they will be left to say, we believe and they will not be tested? But we have certainly tested those before them and Allah will surely make evident those who are truthful and he will surely make evident the liars. Whoever should hope for the meeting with Allah, indeed the term decreed by Allah is coming and he is the hearing, the knowing. So don't get it misconstrued and think that the moment you leave something for Allah's sake, that means you're not going to be tested. No, but rather, we will be tested. However, the promise of Allah is true. The promise of Allah will certainly come to pass. So with that said, I would like to mention three different ways that Allah may replace something that you leave for His sake in obedience to Him with something better. Two of these examples have to do with the dunya, with the life of this world, and the third has to do with the akhirah, with the hereafter. So number one, this has to do with leaving something in the life of this world and Allah replacing what you left 
with something similar to it in that it is of the same type, the same category. So to better illustrate, let's say that there is a Muslim sister who currently has a job that is haram. She is currently working and making money doing something that is sinful, doing something that is displeasing to Allah. Now imagine in this first example, she leaves this career, she leaves this job for the sake of Allah. And therefore Allah blesses her with another job that is better than it. Allah blesses her with a job that is halal, it's permissible. Now there is barakah, there is blessings in the money that she's making. She's in a better environment. This is all around a better job for her. So Allah replaced that job that was left for his sake with a better job. And this is the first example in the life of this world where Allah replaces something with something better in the same category. Now the second example which also focuses on the life of this world is where Allah replaces something with something better but it's of a different category. So to continue the same hypothetical example of a woman leaving a job, let's say that she is leaving a haram job for the sake of Allah. However, she doesn't even want another job. Let's say instead she wants to stay at home, have kids, take care of her family, take care of the house. So in this scenario, Allah does not replace the job with a better job, but rather he replaces it with other things that are better than it. So let's say for example, Allah doesn't give her another job, but he blesses her with better health with happiness, with better relationships with her family. A better relationship with Allah, her Iman, her faith increases. She starts spending her time doing more beneficial things. These are examples of Allah replacing that which she left with something better of a different category. And the third example I'd like to give is where Allah replaces that which was left for his sake in obedience to him with something better than it in the hereafter. And the reality is, brothers and sisters, this is the most important thing. As much as we might be focused on and consumed by the life of this world, as much as we might be focusing on the benefits that we want in this life, the reality is obtaining good in the hereafter is so much more important. And Allah tells us in the Quran, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Nay, you prefer the life of this world while the hereafter is better and more lasting. And there's a very important hadith which illustrates the superiority of the hereafter in comparison to the life of this world. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, One who lived the most luxurious and affluent of lives in this world, who will go to the hellfire in the hereafter, will be brought on the day of resurrection and dipped once in the fire. Then it will be said, O oh, son of Adam, did you ever see anything good? Did you ever have any pleasure? Now remember, this person lived the most affluent, the most luxurious life in the dunya. But after being dipped just once in the hellfire and being asked if he ever experienced any pleasure, what will he say? He will say, no, by Allah, O Lord, he will deny ever having experienced any pleasure. But then the one who suffered the most severe of suffering in this world, in the worldly life, who will enter paradise in the hereafter, he will be brought and dipped once in paradise. And it will be said to him, O oh, son of Adam, did you ever see anything bad? Did you ever experience any hardship? And he will say, No, by Allah, O oh Lord, I never saw anything bad and I never experienced any hardship. Brothers and sisters, this should be sufficient in us understanding the reality of this life in comparison to the hereafter. Now this doesn't mean we don't want good in this life. On the contrary, we ask Allah, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً We supplicate, O Lord, give us good in this life and give us good in the hereafter. However, we should never prioritize the life of this world over the hereafter. The most important thing is on the day of judgment that our good deeds outweigh our bad deeds. And there's no doubt that when we leave something displeasing to Allah for the sake of Allah, we are leaving bad deeds. And those bad deeds may be replaced with good deeds. Allah tells us in the Quran, and whoever strives only strives for the benefit of himself. Indeed, Allah is free from need of all that exists. And those who believe and do righteous deeds, we will surely remove from them their misdeeds and will surely reward them according to the best of what they used to do. Brothers and sisters, that's what we want. We want to leave that which is displeasing to Allah so that he can replace our bad deeds with good deeds. And I want to close by mentioning one last hadith which really emphasizes and clearly illustrates 
the reality of these exchanges that we're making. Exchanging literally a place in the hellfire for a place in paradise. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, none will enter paradise except that he will be shown the place he would have occupied in hellfire if he had done evil so that he may be more thankful. And none will enter hellfire except that he will be shown the place he would have occupied in paradise if he had done good so that it may be a cause of sorrow for him. Brothers and sisters, remember, certainly you will never leave something for the sake of Allah except that he will replace it with something better. Allah knows best. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for hadith number two. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.